Hey everyone, okay, frequently asked questions. Um, I'm gonna read them out from my phone so I've got them all here from all of you that left your comments. And I'll put the little name up on the screen as I read the comment because oftentimes I'm just not gonna be able to pronounce your names correctly or I'll make mistakes. So, um, okay, let's get started. So the first one is, are you married? No, I'm not married, um, but I would like to be. So that answers that one. Okay, tell us about your childhood and family and do you have any pets? I have um, a dog, Lewis, which is in my hater video. I'll put a description here in the um, description bar. I also have two cats, which are which I love. And as far as my childhood goes, um, I was fostered when I was 18 months old to my uncle and his wife. So the people that I would call mum and dad, I suppose technically, would be my uncle and aunt. Um, I have four biological brothers, and I'm I know who they are, and we. We kind of talk, sort of, and I know who my real my real parents are, and we communicate and talk and text and stuff like that. So yeah, that's my family. What's your signature dish, and what's the most embarrassing fact about you? Um, I don't have a signature dish because um, I just don't care for cooking. I like cheese. Does that count? Most embarrassing fact about you? Um, I have a third nipple. It doesn't actually look like a nipple, but it is. I was at the doctor's and I was like, "What is that?" And he's like, "That's a third nipple." So there you go, it's kind of, it's like a little dot. And um, he said, you know, sometimes you get six of them. It's very strange, but I have a dot, so there you go, third nipple. Okay, have you ever considered writing a book and what makeup artist currently do you consider the best? I have thought about writing a makeup book. Um, the book that I would like to write would be, um, it would be a how to do your face from start to finish book. So it wouldn't be a really long one, but just the techniques and things that I like to do. But unfortunately, the cost, the printing, the, PR behind it, the photographer, all of that costs so much money that it's really out of the question at this time. Um, as for favorite makeup artists, there are so many, but I really like Jane Bradley. Jane Bradley created the look for Leona Lewis for Bleeding Love, and her makeup is so pretty. It's what you call pretty, pretty makeup, and I adore it. Um, past ones would be way bandy because I think he was a genius. What is your favorite piece of makeup in the whole wide world? Um, my favorite piece of makeup is blusher because I think it will make you instantly pretty. Blusher is the one thing that can brighten your face and just make you look delicious. Where do you come from? Uh, I come from Somerset. I um, was there for about 18 years from birth until now. Oh, well, until now, which I was 18. Um, yeah, I lived there for 18 years. Um, a place called Burnham-on-Sea. Burnham-on-Sea. And was a bit of a farmer me. And then I moved to South Wales when I was 19. I've been here ever since and I'm 34 now. How many years have you been doing makeup? Um, I started, I became interested in makeup from a wee boy. I remember my mother getting me some blue eyeshadow, blue and pink eyeshadow when I was about eight and let me play with that, which was really cool. Um, I then started thinking about makeup more when I hit 20 because I had really bad experience with my skin and acne and that's what propelled me into it and kind of reminded me that it was what I love to do. So I've been doing it ever since. Uh, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Uh, just the one. I would change my inability to be able to speak to people. I have an incredibly hard time talking to people that I don't know. Um, people who aren't in my um, party. I have very hard trouble talking to them. When I'm out in a pub, I'm like this, and I look really stern and hard-faced, and nobody ever comes and talks to me, so I'd like to change that. Um, what's your favorite fragrance for both men and women? Don't really know so much about the women, but my favorite, favorite fragrance is by Tom Ford. It's um, Tobacco Vanilla. Um, it's a ridiculous amount of money, and the fragrances irritate me and give me headaches. So I rarely use it, so this one will last like years and years and years, but when I do, that's the one I prefer. Um, what's your favorite genre of makeup? Um, it's actually the 1930s, 1940s, where it was basically eyeliner done really close to the lashes, contouring, lots and lots of contouring. That's my thing, and that's, to me, that to me is what makeup is. I love that era, and I love the way the face was shaded with dark and light. So that's that's just it for me, it's what makeup is about. What's the one bit of advice that somebody has given you, be it makeup artistry or otherwise, that has stayed with you? And how did the wink come about? Okay, um, the best advice I've ever, ever been given is be nice. Because nice will take you a lot further than talent will, believe me. Be nice, be funny, be friendly, and you will get on really, really well. Um, always be nice. And as far as the wink, um, 
the wink just came about, but the wink originated many, many years ago because um, somebody winked at me and I just, it just made me feel really nice and I liked it. It wasn't a sexual wink, it wasn't anything overly, you know, dirty, but it was just a nice wink and it just, I liked it a lot and I always remember it made me feel so nice that I thought um, it's a nice way of greeting people. How do you find? How did you find your vocation, and when did you realise your passion for makeup? This goes back to um, when I was in my early twenties. Twenty, I had a terrible case of acne all across here. It, it was the ones that never came to light. Couldn't get rid of them. It was horrible, horrible experience, and that was what propelled me into makeup. It reminded me of my passion for it, and I wanted to cure my own acne, cover my skin, and I just became fascinated with makeup, and I adore every aspect of it. What's the last song you listen to on your iPod? The last song I listened to on my iPad, or iPod even, or my iPhone, was Dana Glover and Falling Into Love. And I just love Dana Glover, she's amazing. Um, what's the makeup product that you've used the longest? MAC Full Coverage Foundation. That's the product I have used for the longest amount of time. It is amazing, it works, it covers everything, and it can be sheared down to nothing. It's a beautiful product. Um, have you worked with any celebrities and who they are? No, I haven't, but I did work next to one once and... Well, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I worked next to one. I can't... I won't say who. Maybe I will at a later time. And this lady was just so unpleasant to her makeup artist. And I mean so unpleasant that it was a horrifying experience. And it took all of my power to just not look up and say, look, don't get funny, lady. But it wasn't a nice experience. I haven't worked with any. Um, I would like to, but I have not. What's your favorite mascara? The problem with favorites is that they change over time because we're exposed to so many different products. I still really, really like um, Phenomenal Eyes by Givenchy. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful mascara, so that's still on my top top 10 list. Um, hi Wayne, just wanted to ask you what your normal daily beauty routine is. My normal, oh, head lice, I'm just kidding. My normal um, routine is wash my face, I would then apply an exfoliant. I would then apply a sunscreen. That's my daytime. If I'm really good or I'm going somewhere where um, people are going to be looking at me, I will put a mineral foundation over that, like Bare Essentials, um, which is what I use, and I will put that over it. In nighttime, I tend to use wash my face, put a toner on, which is just filled with antioxidants. Um, I would then put on maybe an exfoliant, depends how my skin's feeling, and I would finish it off, whatever I do, I finish off with Retin-A in the evening, and that's it. What is your favorite food? Um, my favorite food is cheese. Cheese strings, oh, I love cheese strings. Just love cheese, so that's my favorite food. Um, have you done any theater or film work, and does it interest you? Yes, I have, I worked for a um, broadcasting house for six or seven years. Um, TV work is no fun at all, <laughs> it's really not. If it's out in location, it's absolutely miserable because oftentimes, especially in the UK, it's raining and it's cold and it's miserable. Didn't enjoy any part of the um, that kind of makeup at all. Kind of makeup I prefer to do is one-on-one -on -one with clients and brides. Okay, do you think you get treated differently because you are a guy in a makeup industry? Um, I do, I think I get treated differently and I think it's a good thing. Um, I think that being a guy, we are. I am able to speak to people differently, and I think I'm able to get away with a lot more in terms of being a bit cheeky and a bit rude than I think I would be if I was a female. I think I, I think you just. I've never had a problem with it, and it's always been a really positive experience. Um, never had any negative comments about it whatsoever. Why makeup? How does it make you feel? And what's your favourite look? Um, because it's all I think about. It enters my head it, all the time. It just, it's always in there. I just, makeup for me conjures up so many positive things in me. It makes me feel so happy to do it and play with it and use it on people. Um, my favorite look would probably be something like the really hot mother next door. That would probably be my kind of look. I just like the skin and I like the, I like the kind of crease color and a little bit of color on the outer corner of the lids. Just hot mother next door. Um, how big are you? I'm assuming <laughs> I'm assuming that you're talking about height as opposed to anything else because if that's the case you'll be very disappointed. Um, I am six foot tall so in shoes I'm like six one I guess and I'm 15 stone so I'm you know I'm not tiny. Why do you think 
what do you think is a universal product for guys and girls? Um, what brand is it and why do you love it? Um, a universal product probably for me would be mineral makeup because I think it's the one thing that you can apply to the skin, man or female, and have it look like completely natural, normal skin. With cream foundations and liquid foundations, if you're a man, they will get caught in your beard or stubble, and mineral makeup doesn't do that the same way, so that's probably my the one thing that I really like. Do you have any plans for more videos for guys makeup tutorial? Not really, because there is only so far you can go with men's makeup tutorials without looking, um, without it going too far. I mean, it's up to you however far you want to go, but there really is only so far you can go with a male makeup tutorial. I mean, once you've done bronzer or concealing or dark circles or beard covering or, you know, there is only so far you can go. Um, what's the worst thing about YouTube and the best thing? The best thing is being able to interact with my audience, hearing your comments, even the negative ones about videos because it gives you a different perspective on things and allows you to adapt and change the way you're doing things. The worst thing about YouTube is of course the comments because you, even if you put them on approval, you still have to read the bloody things to begin with and oftentimes they're really, really unpleasant and you can get used to certain ones. Um, you can actually get used to the ones where you're being threatened more than you can about the ones where they're just picking you apart in general. So yeah, the comments, it's a labor of love. Um, why did you start editing YouTube videos and what inspires you to do them? I started because I thought that there was a gap in the market because a lot of the beauty gurus or whatever you want to call them, Oftentimes they're really blessed, they have very large eyes, they're also very, very pretty. It's just very, very easy to apply makeup to a canvas where the eye is very, very large. And oftentimes it really wasn't a case of teaching, it was about sh you know doing my eyes this way. Whereas I wanted to show you that you don't have to have a degree in anything in order to put eyeshadow on. It's very simple when it's broken down. So my tutorials are based upon teaching, which is why when I zoom in on the eye, I'm focusing just on the eye. You're seeing it from such a close perspective that you can understand the techniques that I'm doing. And my eye shape, I think, is a lot more realistic because I don't have a lot of eyelid space. I don't have a lot of crease space. And it's great if you have all those things, I'm not knocking it, but I think that with me, it really was, I just wanted to teach. I wasn't interested in looking pretty. I wasn't interested in anything else, just wanted to teach. Is there anyone you would love to do makeup on, either because you like them as a person or interesting face? I would like to do makeup on Julie Davis because I think she's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, I would like to do makeup on Dolly Parton because, again, she seems so nice, just so nice, and nice, nice does it for me. Uh, how did you figure out that makeup is something you would like to do? Um, again, same comment as before, it really was about this acne and this trouble with it and it just reignited a passion within me on um, wanting to I just love it I just love it I do I just love it uh, what is the element in makeup which makes most difference to the overall look or a look that can or a makeup that can make or break a look a lot of people say it's the skin you know if you've got the skin right then everything else will be great I actually think it's the eyeshadow I think it's the eyeshadow that will make or break a look because you have to be aware of what your eye shape is otherwise you're buggered <laughs> You are absolutely buggered. Um, if, you, if you've got deep set eyes or hooded eyes or standard eyes or wide set eyes or close set eyes, droopy eyes, you need to know because then you can adapt your technique. So to me, it really is about the eyeshadow. Once you get that down and understand where your highlight color goes, where your crease color goes and where your contour color goes, then everything else will be second nature. And finally, this is the most asked question, which is, are you gay? Now, I don't talk about my private life because um, it's very boring and it would bore you all I'm sure and that's the main reason why I don't talk about it also it has nothing to do with anything that I do on here on YouTube now I had a lot of comments a while back um, and I don't get offended by this comment at all ever and I had a lot of comments with people where one person said you know that I should really just be honest with who I am and not try and hide behind a lie. I'm absolutely not trying to hide behind anything. Believe me, everybody who knows me knows who I am. I'm not trying to hide behind anything, but I'm not a whistleblower. Uh, I don't want to bang a trumpet or blow any horns, so to speak. I have no interest in that. It doesn't, it doesn't interest me. I just, it just, I have no, no agenda to push anything. I'm very content with, with who I am. And I think that if you don't have there's this misconception that um, if you're gay, you will be very handsy. You may have an effeminate voice. All the stereotypical things that people say about gay people. And if you don't fall with that, you know, 
there are lots and lots of gay people that have beards and deep voices, believe me. And just because we don't fall into a stereotypical thing doesn't mean we're not who we are. We just don't choose to talk about it. My personal life is something that I don't tend to discuss because it's very dull. And as mentioned with the pub thing, it's all very depressing. And, um, you know, I just, I'm happy with who I am. I'm content with who I am. I've known who I was since I was a child. And it is not, it doesn't define me or even become me. It's just a part of my life that your, your sexuality is a part of your life. It's part of who you are. And that is it. The rest of me is everything else as well. We are all as one. And I don't think that, you know, yeah, I think that's probably put as eloquently as I can on the subject. And hopefully it will put it to rest because um, I have answered it indirectly. And I just have no wish to, you know, go on about anything. Okay, there you go. That is your frequently asked question. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.